story time with Ranger Sarah. Hi kids, it's Ranger Sarah from Whitewater State Park. And today I want to share with you this story, one of my other favorite stories called The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. Once there was a tree. And she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches and eat apples. And they would play hide and seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much. And the tree was happy. But time went by. And the boy grew older. And the tree was often alone. Then one day the boy came to the tree and the tree said, Come boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money and you will be happy. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time and the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back and the tree shook with joy and she said, Come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and I want children and so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house, but you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered. Come and play. I am too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. And after a long time, the boy came back again. I am sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. Well, my teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You could not swing on them. I'm too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I'm too tired to climb, said the boy. I'm sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I'm just an old stump. I am sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I'm very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down. Sit down and rest. And the boy did. And the tree was happy. The end.
Isn't that a nice story? I always start to cry at the end of that story because it's amazing how trees help us. Can you think of some of the different ways that trees help people? Trees give us air to breathe, shade on hot sunny days. We get food from trees like nuts and berries and fruits. We get wood to build our houses. And trees are habitats for lots of different birds and insects and animals. So if we didn't have trees, I don't think we could live on this planet. Trees are very, very special. And can you hear the birds? It's springtime and I'm excited because things are starting to warm up. Birds are starting to return from their wintering grounds down south. The temperatures have been changing a lot at nighttime. It gets below freezing, but then in the daytime it warms up and the snow is melting and things are starting to thaw out. And that means something exciting is happening in the forest. Come along with me, I wanna show you a little bit about the maple trees and something special that's happening with our maple trees. Let's take it outside. So I'm down here in the forest and I am trying to find a maple tree because something special is happening with our maple trees right now this time of year. And so there's a few clues I want to look for on a tree to figure out if it's a maple tree. I can look at the leaves. Now this time of year there's not many leaves on the tree, but I can look down around on the ground for leaves that look like this, kind of a star shape. We can also look for the seeds, the little helicopters of the maple tree. So if I look down around on the ground here, around me, I do see some of those, they're kind of curled up from being all shriveled up, but uh, star-shaped leaves. So we have maple leaves. Another thing I can look at on a tree is the way the, the twigs are. And maple trees have opposite branching. So their little twigs and their branches come out opposite um, each other on the stem. So let's pretend I am a maple tree. I have my, my trunk and then I have my branches. One branch is opposite the other branch on that trunk. And so that's what we can look at. Most trees have alternate branching where they'll have a branch and then up a little further is a different branch and then up further is another branch. And that's very different than um, opposite. So we want opposite branching. I can also look at the bark of the tree. And this tree has really um, kind of um, flaky gray bark. It's kind of thick. It's not super thick, but it's kind of thick. And so kind of a thick gray um, flaky bark is something else we can look at. Also this time of year, a lot of times you, you can find where squirrels or even woodpeckers have been pecking or nibbling on the tree to get to the sap. Because this time of year, the maple tree has sap that starts moving inside of it. And that's what we're going to collect. I'm gonna show you in a short little video here how you can collect uh, sap and cook it down and make it into yummy maple syrup. And so we have a few simple tools. The video is gonna kind of show you the tools you need and how you do it. It's a really simple process. And there's at the end of the video, uh, a website where you can get instructions to make maple syrup on your own. Now, if you don't have maple trees in your yard, you might wanna to get to know some people that have a yard with maple trees and maybe you can um, ask permission and work with them and make it a fun kind of a neighborhood project you can do together. So uh, stay tuned for that video and see how you can make your own maple syrup. How to make maple syrup. First, tap the tree. Second, pound in a spile. Third, hang your bucket. Fourth, collect the sap. Fifth, strain and boil the sap. Sixth, 
Sixth, filter through cheesecloth. Seventh, finish off on stove, stove top. Eighth, bottle and sterilize bottles. Ninth, enjoy your syrup.